Semiconductor manufacturing is one of the most complex mass production processes in human history. As chips become more sophisticated, the techniques used to produce them become more extensive and complicated. In 1972, the first commercially viable microprocessor contained about 2,000 transistors with critical dimensions of 10,000 nanometers. Compare that to an advanced processor launched in January 2023, which contains 67 billion transistors on the order of 5 nanometers each. Decades of research and innovation have enabled the complexity of today's manufacturing processes. While innovations in automation are some of the more visible improvements in semiconductor manufacturing, it's the invisible world of chemistry and physics that has experienced the most significant advancements. Chemistry is essential to the manufacturing processes, the equipment that supports those processes, and the devices themselves. Let's take a look at the production life cycle of a semiconductor. Designing a chip is like building a skyscraper, where architects and engineers design and build layer by layer from the bottom up. Once design is complete, device manufacturing begins. Fabrication starts when sand or other raw materials are used to form long cylinders, called ingots. These ingots are then cut into incredibly thin slices, called wafers. Wafers are the surfaces upon which chips are fabricated. Chemical suppliers manufacture and formulate specialized chemistries, which play a critical role in processing these wafers to make semiconductor chips. Through a deliberate and complex set of hundreds of processing steps, a sequence of layers is applied, with some microchip designs consisting of more than 200 layers. First, silicon dioxide is grown or deposited on the wafer through oxidation. By use of oxidative chemicals, such as water vapor or oxygen, along with silane and argon. This turns silicon into silicon oxide in deep wells that electrically isolate transistors from each other. Photolithography is a process that defines where to add or remove materials in subsequent steps of the fabrication of integrated circuits. It creates extremely small patterns, down to a few nanometers in size, with precise control of the shape, size, and placement of the images it produces. An organic solvent and polymer solution are dispensed and baked on the wafer surface to form a layer which is then exposed to light through a mask. Exposed sections are then removed with aqueous or organic solvents to leave an intricate pattern on the surface for the next manufacturing step. Silicon is not naturally conductive. To make silicon a semiconducting device, Atoms from gas sources of boron, arsenic, phosphorus, aluminum, antimony, gallium, or indium are driven into the silicon at high energy or temperature through ion implantation or diffusion. This process step, called doping, adds or removes the right amount of electrons within the pure silicon to create flow paths for the electrons in the transistors. Next, full surface or selective surface deposition steps add precision layers of new substances to the wafer surface, from atomic to micron thicknesses, providing for further development of conducting or insulating building blocks. Deposition chemicals include xylane, diborane, phosphine, TIOS, and ozone, or O3. Process chambers may be cleaned with gases such as nitrogen trifluoride or perfluoro compounds. Next, etching chemically removes specific areas of a deposited film in order to expose an underlying material or deposit another material. Etching may be performed in a wet process using solutions of acids such as sulfuric, hydrochloric, phosphoric, and hydrofluoric, bases such as ammonium hydroxide, or oxidizers such as hydrogen peroxide. Etch is also accomplished in highly reactive plasmas using various gases such as hydrofluorocarbons and perfluorocarbons. Prior processing steps prepare the device for metallization, which creates electrical interconnections between all the transistors on the wafer. A variety of techniques is used to deposit metals, including barrier layers of cobalt, nickel, tungsten, titanium, or tantalum, followed by aluminum or copper interconnects. They may be sputtered onto the wafer surface from solid targets, deposited using gaseous or liquid precursors in chemical vapor deposition, or, in the case of copper, electroplated from a copper solution. All of these processes are conducted within enclosed mini-environments. 
Then, chemical mechanical planarization uses chemical and physical forces to create a microscopic and perfectly flat surface for the next layer of circuit features. Between many deposition and metallization layers, a pad with a liquid chemical called slurry polishes the surface of the wafer until the desired nanometer topography is reached on the exposed uppermost layer. Slurry is a suspension of nano-sized silica, polymer, or metal particles dispersed in an aqueous solution containing other chemicals such as oxidizers, acids, and corrosion inhibitors. These process steps are repeated hundreds of times on each semiconductor wafer. Each wafer contains many individual devices called dye. A single wafer typically holds tens to tens of thousands of them. Upon completion of processing, each dye on the wafer is electrically tested for functionality via a probing process. The wafer is then thinned by polishing the backside, and then tape is applied to the back of the wafer to hold the dye in place during sawing. Wire bonds or solder spheres are added to the singulated dye to facilitate electrical connection. To protect from humidity, chemicals, or vibration, the connections to the dye are enclosed with encapsulants, like underfill, coatings, or mold compounds. Upon completion of the packaging steps, the device is transferred to a type of dispense packing used to protect the devices during storage and shipping to the electronics assembler. The tape and reel, tube, or tray used as the dispense packing fits the assembler's parts picker that places the device onto a circuit board to connect it with the other electronic components necessary to make a functioning piece of hardware. The packaged devices are placed in boxes and shipped to customers for incorporation into the products that power our modern world. All told, the semiconductor manufacturing process can involve from 400 to more than 1,400 tightly controlled and automated steps, involving precise machinery, each using specific, high-purity chemistries. If any single step fails, the chips will not function. The margin for error is smaller than the chips themselves. The manufacturing spaces required to successfully perform and safely control this intricate process feature the planet's largest and most expensive operations. Next, let's dive into semiconductor manufacturing facilities.